Hi there, Lindsay here. Today we're gonna paint this rose in oil in a mason jar. I love my mason jars. This is kind of like a, a vintage rose or a wild rose. You know, the ro kind of grow on rose bushes. And um, I just love the whole vi um, ball jar motifs. It, they're fun to paint. And I thought this would go really nicely with the bittersweet that I did earlier this month in oils. This painting took me under an hour. So I was really pleased with that because I think it's the fastest one I've done yet, and I tend to kind of fuss a bit with my paintings, so I'm trying to break myself of that habit because it usually doesn't push the fat, the painting forward at all. It usually just kind of makes me go back. Uh, so what I did was I did a very, very loose sketch with oil-based markers, and I like oil-based markers uh, for this because they don't smear when you paint over them, and they dry so fast that you can paint right over them and not have to worry about them too much. I typically had used in the past oil pastels, but um, when I want to make sure that I don't smear out my lines or they don't get in the background where I don't want them, I find that um, the markers do a better job because I can cover them up without them um, changing the paint on top. When you use oil pastels to sketch, it will mix into the paint and actually turn the oil pastel into oil paint, and then you'll have that as part of your painting, which is fine if that's what you're going for, like a landscape or whatnot. But um, when I have images that are uh, inorganic, such as like jars and things like that, it's nice to have a, a medium that I can do my sketch with that's not going to dissolve, but I could cover over it and it's not going to leach through. Uh, so that's why I've been using that. Those are the Pintar ones. I've had those for a couple of years. I'm starting to use some of the colors up though, I've noticed, but they work really good for this. Also, the um, PBO4 Artist markers work really well for this. Any sort of oil-based markers, uh, Arteza, anything is going to work really well. I don't know how long they'll keep. They seem to be doing pretty well. Um, I was really worried because I hadn't used them in a long time and they kind of, I thought they might be dried up, but I've been able to get everyone going again. So that's good. I'm starting off by basing in some colors and I've been trying to use up some oil paint. So most of the oil paint I'm using is um, the Javalia oils that came in the mason jars. They've since moved to tubes, but I still had some of the old mason jar versions. So I love that paint. And, but I found the jars just so inconvenient, but I thought, well, since I'm doing oils pretty much every day this month, or trying to, maybe not finishing an oil every day, but kind of sitting down at least starting one or working on it for a few minutes anyway, um, I figured that would be a good opportunity to just have those out, use them up, and, uh, and not feel bad about wasting them because they're kind of, they're an expensive brand of paint, they're high quality, so I felt bad about not using them, so I just wanted to kind of get them used up. With the jar, whenever you're painting a jar or anything glass with water in it, you're gonna have this weird magnification. You're gonna have reflections of all of the different colors and lights that are in your background and in your subject. And it's just a great way to integrate colors. So I try to kind of uh, smudge some colors in as I'm going just to kind of get that, um, the feeling of the of the colors, the ambiance of the room and all of that stuff uh, right there in the jar. I turn my canvas around quite a bit to make sure that I have things symmetrical, like the edges of the jar straight and like the ellipse on the bottom and the waterline fairly accurate. Things can go off real easily in oils because it's such a fluid medium, meaning that it's not like drying right away like an acrylic or a marker would, it's staying wet so you can keep molding it and moving it, which is great, which is what I love about oils and what I don't like about acrylics. But because of that, you can lose your good lines as well as your bad ones. So it's just something to kind of keep in mind. And um, I tend to bounce around and work on the whole painting at once, which I know some artists will start in on one detail and work out from there, but I really like to work the whole painting at once because Otherwise, you could draw something perfect, like I could have a perfect flower and realize that I have no room for the vase. So I don't want that to happen. So I like to start off really loose and bold and then refine as I go, as refined as I'm gonna get it. And all of these paintings I've been doing in November, all of these oil paintings have been a la prima or all at once, which means I've pretty much painted them in one sitting. Um, I wanted to increase my speed and stop fussing, and that was a really good way to kind of achieve that. Now, let's talk about that November goal here. I told myself at the beginning of the month my goal was to paint 20 paintings, and I think this one is number nine, and I actually started number 10 today. And so yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna hit 20 unless I do a few days where I'm working on like three at once or something, but, uh, and I might do that actually. There's been a few times I'm thinking, why don't I just have three little easels set up because you know, there, there are times where I just like to stop on one and I do, and I go back the next day just cause I need to let that paint set up a little bit so I can just put on a few details. Um, 
So I think I might do that, but also November is a really busy month um, in my business. And I've also been dealing with uh, all the COPPA compliance stuff, which has been plaguing everybody on YouTube. I'm sure you've heard about it, so I'm not gonna re like get into it here, but uh, but yeah, it's been a big, big headache for anybody that does family-friendly content on YouTube, even though I don't have a kid's channel, since kids could watch it, it's, you know, you just, you gotta follow the letter of the law, otherwise you'll get shut down. So <laughs> that's what I've been stressing about lately. Um, so now I'm at the point in my painting, though, that I can start adding in some highlights, adding in some details. It's kind of the fun part. I think when you get to this level, it's kind of like, okay, now I can, you know, I've done all the, I've done the kind of the meat and potatoes of the painting. Now I can kind of work on the garnishing and putting in little details. And it's so fun to do little leaves and vines and stuff with oil paint because it just glides on the canvas. By the way, all of the little canvases, all these little five by seven canvases have been by Arteza and they are so nice to work on and they're so inexpensive. I'll link them up below. But other than that, uh, that painting I did, the big mason jar, and the uh, church one, they've all been on these Arteza panels and they have just, just the priming is just perfect for these oils. I am doing the uh, lettering here with just a fine tip brush and I've been using a lot of synthetic brushes actually and they've been washing out just fine. Um, I'm just using a small synthetic round to do the detailing uh, of the lettering on the jar and add some little uh, bright highlights. Works really well because it's such a soft brush that it doesn't disturb things that I've put on the lower layer. So I'll often start with like a, a, a like a, either an artificial hog brush or an old hog brush that I've had and then I'll work to softer uh, like uh, tacklon rounds. And because those softer brushes aren't gonna wipe away all the stuff I have underneath. It's going to almost let me apply it on top versus lift up what I have down there already. So that's really helpful. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other tips I can offer here. I can also put highlights on the leaves with that. It doesn't really mess up what I have underneath. Um, and I just want to make sure that I get that kind of hard glass, shiny glass essence by getting those highlights in. And I could probably pretty much just leave it here at this point because I think I have enough detail. I did decide on the next day to go in and add just a few kind of darker creases in the petals or not even creases, but like shadows. But you know, as I look at it, I'm thinking I probably didn't even need to do that, but there's something very tempting to just want to kind of fuss with it when you get to the pretty stage where you just want to keep painting it at that stage because it's so fun and rewarding. Um, but uh, but I advise against that or or let it sit a few days. Uh, I get very impatient. So limiting myself to a shorter time span with the oils is really helpful. If you want to, um, if you're interested in um, places where you can grow as an artist, I do have a membership group called Crit Critique Club that you can join and you can, um, I have a couple of the long oil painting tutorials in that group. Not this one. This is just a, a sketchbook Sunday one. Um, there's also monthly prompts and whatnot. And if you like to watercolor and like to paint your own Christmas cards, I have a special on my hand painted holiday class. It's 50% off this month. So you can get those Christmas cards and Christmas tags all done. And I'll leave a link to that as well as Critique Club in the video description if you're interested in either of those classes. They're a lot of fun and I've been seeing some really awesome work this month. Um, I'm just fussing around with the little details. This is actually me coming back in today and just seeing if I could get a few. It's a very light kind of, I guess you'd call it a white rose, but it does have yellow undertones. So I was just kind of putting a little bit of like a lemon yellow in my yellow ochre, a smidgen of burnt umber, just to get those darker shadows in there. The paint's real wet though, so it's not like I can really alter it too much because white is such a strong color in oil paints, but um, I just did a little did a little fussing and, um, you know, decided to call it a day and put it in my drying rack to dry. So this is painting number nine. I started painting, num painting number 10 today. It is the 24th of November, so I've got six days to get <laughs> 10 more paintings done. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to happen, but hey, it's, it's, anyway, it's like 10 paintings that I wouldn't have done if I hadn't set that challenge for me. So I'm gonna call it a win. That's what my friend uh, Kathy was telling me last night. She's like, you know, how many oil paintings would you have done if you didn't set this channel, uh, this challenge? Probably none. So I'm gonna call it a win. Hope you enjoyed this, this uh, sketchbook Sunday today. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Until next time, happy crafting.